Good evening, everyone. I'm George Alexis, superintendent of Watchung Borough School District. Thank you for joining us tonight in this initial referendum planning meeting. As you know, the board has decided to establish an ad hoc committee to engage with the community in an effort to gather feedback, insight, and input on a referendum, which will be designed to enhance the educational opportunities for Watchung Borough students. The first step in this planning process is to give all stakeholders, staff, families, parent organizations, and watching residents an opportunity to voice their ideas for improving our educational facilities and express their interest in being part of the ad hoc committee. The committee will be responsible for providing feedback and input to the board's operations finance committee, which ultimately will make recommendations to the full board regarding the scope and timing of a future referendum. We realize that we'll have a diverse audience this evening. Some of you have plenty of knowledge about the previous referendum and some of you do not. Tonight, because we wish to make this an open forum designed to gather as much community feedback as possible and because we wanna ensure that everyone has a voice, we are not presenting the previous referendum again. What we can offer is a brief background the proposed December referendum included upgrades to the HVAC system, building interiors, security, building envelope, electrical systems and technology, and the existing site plan. The total amount was 14.9 million with the state pledging approximately 4.9 million in state aid or roughly a third of the total cost. For anyone who would like to learn more about it, and you can do this even during the meeting, you can find more information on the referendum webpage on the district website. There's a lengthy presentation uh, that gives more detail and some images that helps anyone who doesn't have previous experience with the referendum gain a better understanding. But again, tonight we are interested in listening to the community and wish to hear your opinions about what you liked or didn't like in the previous referendum or what you'd like to see or not see in a future referendum. I will moderate this evening's discussion over the next 90 minutes in a way that I hope minimizes my voice and amplifies the voices of our community. Mr. Pepe is taking notes, but the meeting also is being recorded and will be shared with the board members uh, and posted on our website so your feedback and input can be heard. Before we get started, I just have a few procedural issues, excuse me, to cover. First, Please use the raise hand function in Zoom to let us know when you would like to speak. Please keep your microphones on mute in the meantime. And please state your name and address and kindly turn on your camera when speaking. Thank you all for being here. I think we can get started. So we'll take a look at the, Mr. Pepe, take a look at the attendee list and see if we have any raised hands to begin with. None yet. Did you, Mr. Alexis, did you want me to just do a quick demo of how to find the referendum webpage on our website? That'd be great. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. I currently have it queued to the district website. So there's two ways up from the main district website that you can get to um, the referendum webpage. The first is right on the main page under news and events, there's a button for referendum. This is gonna remain under news and events throughout the process. So clicking this will bring me to our um, new referendum website, which is sparse right now, but we'll be bu building this as we go. The second way is if you're anywhere in our district website and you go to district board of education, on the left side, the top link also will bring you to the referendum webpage. Uh, couple, just one thing to point out on here right now, at the very bottom, if you wanted to see those uh, documents that Mr. Alexis was referring to earlier from the pre previous referendum, the old page is still live. So you can click this button at the bottom and this will bring you to the old referendum web page and you can watch any, you know, read through the documents and watch any videos that you'd like. And so that is my demonstration of how to get to the referendum website. So anyone who would like to talk, if you have any comments or questions, this would be the time to raise your hand. 
We have one. All right, Mr. Rock. Hi, good evening. Uh, I hope you don't mind this initial comment because I do understand and I take everybody at their word that they really want to have community involvement. So my first question is, how is the community notified about tonight? I happened to find out by accident in talking to somebody. I then went to look for information on the school's Facebook page, but that hasn't been updated since 2019. I went to look at the town website, the main town Wachung website. There was things about the high school school board meeting tomorrow night, but nothing about tonight. I asked several other people that I know from town and nobody heard about this. Uh, it was one person that happened to mention it to me. So there was nothing in the mail. I never received a mailer. I never received anything by like a Nixle room, uh, uh, phone call on the phones. I, I'm just confused about how the community knew about this, if it is something you're pushing for, but yet it hasn't been promulgated on any of the sites. If you go to the school board website, it just says referendum, it doesn't say anything about a meeting tonight under that. Uh, so unless you happen to open it, not realizing that it's a new referendum or a new meeting about tonight, you would think it's the old referendum stuff still posted. There was nothing communicated to the community. Uh, let me rephrase that. I heard nothing about it until somebody just happened to mention it to me. So maybe somebody can explain to us how this was told to the community about tonight. Bruce, yeah, no, we've been we're talking about this for a while. We've reported it at uh, board meetings, um, but we also sent a mailer out, a um, five by nine mailer that went out to every resident uh, household in the borough. Okay, maybe I just it was our get understanding it. that that people received those because we did get feedback that they were received. So, um, and then uh, just on Thursday night again, uh, we talked about it at the board meeting, and I sent out a message to the entire school community of everyone okay. who is on our um, our mailing list. I know that doesn't reach all the residents. Okay, uh, but maybe it's our understanding that that people knew about it, and uh, apologize okay. that you did not hear about it. No, and as far as the school board meeting, I would have had no way of knowing that because it's not hybrid anymore. So I wouldn't have had a chance to listen in. I can't make it to the live meeting. And so, okay, either way, that's great as long as the community knows about it. Because again, like I said, I certainly did not. And neither did quite a few people that I spoke to after and I asked them about it. But thank you very much. I'm just going to listen in. Okay, Kathleen is, uh, has her hand up. Rich, can you unmute her? Oh, oh, hold on. Sorry, Kathleen. We clicked the button at the same time and I unmuted you. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Kathleen Ruperto Ferrara, 45 Rock Avenue. Uh, uh, as a representative of the PTO, we're asking if there can be a possible way of uh, probably incorporating a functional kitchen as a uh, we were asking to provide food services to our district students as beca it's becoming a little bit more difficult to find parent volunteers to assist with lunch distribution. That'll be all. Great, thank, thank you, Kathleen. Thank you. We, we are doing an initial study um, of the kitchen capacity. We've already begun that with our architects. Uh, we're also talking with, uh, with Warren uh, who was looking at a similar upgrade to a kitchen and seeing if there possibly can be shared services in some way. Uh, but we definitely have that on our, um, on our list. So thank you very much. Okay, I think next is, um, is uh, Chris Panza. Can you hear me? Hi, Chris, yes. How are you? Um, I live at 195 Scott Drive. My boys are through the system, but I do have a lot of experience in HVAC. We're an HVAC rep for a number of products that are probably being considered, and I would be more than happy to lend any expertise, any voice when it comes to budgeting and understanding what you're, what you're looking at versus different technologies to see what makes the most sense to bring the schools up the code. 
Well, terrific. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Other comments or feedback or questions? Oh, Chris again. Chris, go ahead. Chris, you can continue you, with that. Sure. Do, are, do you have um, an engineer in mind that you're going to have go through and review all the systems to see what what needs to be updated? I know you've got two pipe unit ventilators. I saw you have some older chillers, but what's the plan? Is it to rip everything out for this? 6.5 million or is it to update what you have um i'd like to get some get an understanding on it doesn't have to be today but is there a is there a plan moving forward to really get into what 6.5 million dollars is supposed to to purchase for hvac systems yes that that will be part of the process chris um what, what the board did recently is hire um an independent engineer to do um, an assessment, an independent assessment of the previous um, report that was given to us by our architects and engineers. And so that will be uh, taking place in the next uh, couple of months uh, and information will be available. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Other input, folks who maybe just have questions. Uh, Chris, I see your hand is still raised. Did you have another comment, or or were you finished? Looks, his hand oh, is down. But Thank it you. Looks like Emily's yep. hand is Emily's hand is up. Emily should be. Hi, Emily stepped away, but uh, this is Lou. Uh, we we have a question around, is there gonna be a vote for this? And is it gonna be a special date? Because the, the previous vote um, was not on election date. So we wanna make sure that we don't, I mean, we didn't miss it, but just uh, to have a better understanding of when the vote is gonna be and, and, and kind of when this is all gonna be put out. Lou, Lou that's a great question. Um, Typically, there are uh, four special election dates throughout the year that are set aside uh, by the state for these kinds of bond questions. Um, typically, it's September, December, January, and March. Mr. Pepe, March, right? So th those four dates, and also it can be um, done at the same time as the general election in November. Uh, it's hard to predict uh, at this point, what the date would be uh, for a date, um, but it looks like it probably, uh, probably December would be the earliest, uh, if not, if, you know, unless we had to move into January or March of next year, but even that might be premature to try to predict right now. But we absolutely will be, you know, it, when a date is set, um, that information will be shared, um, of course, because we want, everyone to, to vote in that election. Thank you. It's just difficult when you don't have it aligned with the election because folks are just, there's a lot going on. It's, it's, it's a challenge to get folks actively engaged in the process. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Others? So Chris has his hand up. Yeah, yeah, you should be able to unmute still. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. If if this is something you're anticipating to try to get done for the next summer season, you really need to align this and get this resolved by election day. Because 
the, the lead times on every single piece of equipment that you would need in these buildings is at least 20 to 30 weeks. And there's no, there's no let up in sight. So I heard you talking about not getting it done by then. It'll be a, you won't have a shot to get any of your equipment installed next summer if you don't. Yeah, that, that's consistent with what um, the architects told us last year that um, with the December date, there was, there was the HVAC um, units because of the lead time would probably have to wait until the following summer or during um, school breaks during that following year. But that's helpful. So thank you for confirming that. Well, we must have other folks who want to share some thoughts or ask questions. Excuse me, George. Yes, Anthony. Um, I was thinking maybe also if you wanted to uh, just say a few words about uh, you know the other part of the purpose of this uh, first meeting is the invitation for those who might be interested in uh, participating in the ad hoc committee going forward. And so we have, uh, besides some of the Board of Education members, also uh, representatives from uh, various school community groups, and then the open invitation to, to some of the public also. Sure. Uh, I was going to wait until the end, but maybe this okay. is a good time just to mention now, but then maybe this is a good time just to mention it. Um, so, yeah, first of all, um, you know, we would like you to, we showed you the, the referendum page and where to find more information, um, but we also have a referendum email address and you can email referendum at watchungschools.us. It's referendum at watchungschools.us. Um, you can ask questions there. You can provide more information. Um, in addition, you can use that email to notify us if you have an interest in being part of the referendum ad hoc committee. Um, and because we can't necessarily include everyone, depends on the interest level and how many people are, are asking to be part of this, um, we, it would be great if you could emphasize any skills or knowledge uh, that you believe would contribute to the committee, sort of like the way that Chris did in talking about his experience with the HVAC units. Um, so again, that email address is referendum at watchingschools.us. You can send in ideas there, you can ask questions, and you certainly can. We encourage you to uh, email us through that email address to let us know if you're interested in being part of the referendum ad hoc committee. Do I see another hand? Yep, Chris? that's Emily. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm Lou, sorry it's on, our, hey. on our family's <laughs> behalf again, another question. Uh, do we have an idea when the last time any, I, and you might have referenced this earlier, so I apologize, but do we have any reference uh, or, you know, an idea of when any of these systems were previously updated or maintained? I'm going to I'm going to defer to Rich Pepe on this one because he has a much better grasp of those details. Um, but the the last time most of the, these units that were uh, targeted to be replaced through the referendum are ones that went in um, during the last as a result of the last referendum back in 2004. Uh, so most of them are are close to 20 years old, and according to the engineer, past past their useful life. But Rich, go ahead and add a little texture to that answer. Right. So we did. Um, we have a document. Trying to find it in my vast list of documents from the referendum. We do have a document where we actually listed all of our HVAC units and what their um, life, when they were purchased, what their useful life was according to ASHRAE, and um, the ones, all of the items that were included in the projects list for the last referendum were ones that were going to be beyond their useful life before 
uh, within the next couple of years. Um, I can get more detailed information even while we're talking, if I can find that document. Um, but we, that was part of, uh, of what we did in, in building the projects list before. So basically a, a quick answer is that over the years when things have failed, we have replaced some. In the past couple of years, we've had a couple of good opportunities that we've taken advantage of. One got us about four um, our, uh, HVAC units replaced where we only paid 20% of the cost because of a grant I was able to um, secure. So we took advantage of that to get rid of the oldest, uh, lowest hanging fruit. Um, we're looking into some more of those kinds of projects. So as they come available, we're applying to try and keep things uh, moving forward. Um, before the referendum, the one thing I can tell you is that before the referendum is finalized for this, this round, those numbers will have to be adjusted, right? So we'll have to look at anything, any work that we've accomplished between now and then, um, those won't be included in what we put out for referendum. It would only be things that are coming to the end of their useful life. Thanks so much, Rich. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question, Lou. Ah, looks like we have Angela Mueller. Angela, you're up. And Hans is next. Hi. Hi, thanks. Just had a quick question as you were talking about the community involvement, and I was interested in whether there's a liaison with the borough council on this as well as the referendum is moving forward. That's one of the liaisons we talked about, but we don't have uh, we don't have one set just yet. Okay, so no one's been appointed yet. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Jouet is up next. Yep. What, what happened? See him in the panelist zone. Let's see. Yeah. Can you there, there's Mr. Gerard. Okay. There he is. Okay. I didn't. Uh, I thought I was on there. Um, has anybody come up with a, a definition of useful life? Have our engineers given us what useful life really means? I, I don't think it's something we use at home when our uh, air conditioning system breaks down. Um, in I, I have some background in, in, in the air conditioning area also, and <clears throat> different items of equipment greatly vary. Um, if you look at chillers, and I believe there are a couple of chillers in question, uh, a chiller is a, a big hunk of uh, metal, um, cast iron or some casting with a big propeller in it. Uh, it's typically recommended that they get torn down every five or 10 years and they get cleaned out. And it's not unusual with that kind of maintenance that they can go 30, 40 years. So, I, I, you know, I, I hear the term use for life. I think when we're working with our engineers, uh, I think we really need to get some kind of a, a good definition on use for life. Is use for life when we have to repair them once a year? is useful life when we have to repair them four or five times uh, in a short period of time and, and we have serious outages. I, I think this is an important item, which uh, I think would uh, provide a lot of clarity, clarity to, the, to the people in Wachung anyway. When, you know, when you're talking about significant uh, expenditures and, and as you realize there's competition for other expenditures, it would be good for people to understand what this terminology means. It's good feedback, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I see Andy Baldesser, who is, oh wait, I'm sorry, no, he doesn't have his hand raised. Well, I asked him to unmute anyway, if he wants to speak. <laughs>
Other feedback, folks, or questions? Other information you'd like to hear about? We're open to that. George, I'd like to just uh, add again a couple words that um, we've kind of discussed in the past, but maybe uh, to share with the the meeting uh, today is um, that part of the the vision for the ad hoc committee is um, to get input from the public on how best we can interact with the community also. There's, there are the aspects of the scope of work and uh, the proposed work items or what additional um, ideas there are for the work items, but there's also just um, things that uh, beyond the ad hoc committee, uh, surveys or ways to uh, reach out and get input from the community. So uh, when we're inviting and asking for people that would like to uh, be involved. It's, it's for uh, some of the focus on the previous projects, which was heavily HVAC, but also um, school interior uh, upgrades and also uh, site work upgrades, but, uh, but also um, people that might have ideas on how to, how to make sure as many people in the community are are able to participate as possible, um, or um, you know, just other other thoughts that maybe um, people with financing, uh, you know, finance backgrounds might have some suggestions of people that have experience working um, with uh, referendums in other districts, people that have design experience. It's it's really looking to uh, to benefit the process from the experiences uh, for all different types of experiences throughout the community. So um, we, we really would like to, uh, to hear from people if they have some, uh, any thoughts about uh, being involved in the ad hoc committee. And then uh, if not, hopefully um, we were talking about maybe having another uh, meeting such as this kind with just a, a listening session or another uh, invitation, but then uh, as the ad hoc committee has has some meetings, there also will be um, more opportunities for the community to uh, to give input. And uh, so just wanted to uh, kind of express that that's the type of invitation that we wanted to, uh, to share. So thank you. That, yeah, I think that's helpful. Thank you, Anthony and the... Uh comment about the finance backgrounds is a good segue to our next uh, participant here. Mr. Bakos, give your hand up. Please feel free to jump in. <clears throat> yes, hi, this is Dennis Bakos, 47 Brook Drive. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see me or not. I'm on a different device than usual. So apologies if I'm not showing my face. I think I am, but I can't really tell on this device yet. Um, so I guess I just wanted to start by saying that I voted for the referendum in December, um, I, and you know for a lot of different reasons, um, and and I did follow the evolution of the discussion uh, as it transpired for I guess well over a year, um, and from a cost perspective, uh, I thought that it was very um, it was a, it was a very good. Uh, process in terms of the numbers going in a downward direction from the original, I think it was $18 million or something like that, down to 14.9. So I think that that was uh, a directionally positive uh, way that, that everything went. However, I know that there were um, some people who were uh, very concerned about the, the costs and uh, perhaps they voted no because of the cost. And let's face it, we were um, in the midst of a pandemic and uh, people were losing jobs and people are on fixed incomes and there's rising inflation. So I get it where, um, you know, one could vote no from a cost point of view, 
Uh, I think another aspect was that perhaps people didn't understand a lot of the items that were in there. And some people who did understand it maybe just didn't believe in it. Uh, and so I think that the purpose of this call is, is very, very good. Uh, and I'm glad to see that, uh, that there's this level of engagement and that there'll be future engagement as well. And, you know, when I think about a referendum, I think about the fact that you need to establish a need uh, and there needs to be some sort of vision aspect of it as well. Um, and, you know, perhaps we didn't establish a need in all categories. Um, you know, I think that uh, there's a couple examples that jump out to me that um, gave me pause in voting yes, but I voted yes nonetheless. And one of them was the high number related to security, which was one, according to the records, I saw $1.28 million. And so, you know, and I do understand that maybe we can't be as transparent about all security aspects of our infrastructure uh, for security and safety reasons, but it was a very big number, uh, 1.28 million. And the other one, which I thought was rather large that perhaps did, didn't go uh, uh, far enough in terms of the explanation was the ADA upgrades. So I thought that that was, that was a $1.39 million number. And um, it, was, it was not clear to me um, all of the different components that tallied up to $1.39 million. So I'm not saying that they weren't needed um, and that the security wasn't needed, but um, just as input or, or feedback for, for the board, um, I think that perhaps we could do a little bit more on that side. Um, and I also think that the, the elephant in the room, really, uh, the, the way I look at it was there was a flyer that went out a week or two weeks before the vote. And in this flyer, which I disagree with most of it, uh, and I found that the timing was curious, and I also found that the anonymity was curious about it as well. But you know, when I took a, a, a look, a very neutral, unbiased look at it, um, which I'm sure the board has already done as well, I think that there, there were some things in there that had some validity, or although, like I said, um, I disagreed with most of it. Um, you know, one of the points was, I'm not gonna go through every single point, I don't wanna uh, take everyone's time, but you know, they did say that it was premature, which I disagreed with. They said it was vaguely defined, which I thought, yes, somewhat, as I already noted about the security and the ADA upgrades. Um, but anyway, I, I think that the, the committee would need to go point by point through that because that was, um, in my opinion, somewhat of a torpedo uh, flyer out there. And, and I do think that it needs to be addressed if it hasn't already. I'm sure that the board has taken a lot of time to, to look through that and study that and see what the uh, realm of possibilities are. Another thing which, I, which was on my mind, I've, you know, my daughter is still uh, in Valley View and talked to a lot of to her and a lot of her friends. And I think maybe a student survey uh, might be an interesting idea. Uh, I've done a very informal survey in my car driving kids around. <laughs> and aside from the infrastructure type of stuff, which I think is extraordinarily boring to children, um, some of the, the items that came up as sort of the top three, I'll add a fourth as well, but top three that came up in my car were sort of that outdoor area uh, so I think we call it the outdoor learning commons, maybe. Um, the art room, the kids seem to be excited about. And the library area, especially when, you know, I mentioned the glass that, you know, the teachers or the students can write on and stuff like that. Those are the top three things. But anyway, my point is that maybe surveying the students on the, the quote unquote fun stuff, maybe not the boring infrastructure stuff, might be an interesting way to approach it, at least through Valley View. 
Um, by the way, uh, some of the other feedback that I got about the bathroom was that the um, that the, there was problems with water pressure and that there were some privacy issues in some of the bathroom stalls as well. But anyway, that's um, another aside. I think that one of the criticisms also was that um, that there wasn't as much curriculum heavy or, uh, or curriculum issues involved with the, with the referendum at all, which I'm not sure I agree with, but um, you know, I, I think that um, to the extent that we can show how our kids are going to learn, I know that there were the videos and everything else on the library, um, but how or if curric the curriculum is going to be enhanced or um, or shared with the students um, and the faculty, I think uh, would be uh, a good approach. Some of this stuff is very difficult to prove, of course. You know, I think, for example, in the in that flyer, they made a reference to uh, what was it? They made a reference to the state of art, uh, the educational instruction the state of art education instruction. And, you know, that is kind of, um, uh, it's very difficult to prove and quantify something related to um, uh, education in that manner. But anyway, I think that that was just yet another uh, point. Um, interest rates are going up, you know, and we talked about that last year. It was talked about ad nauseum and now, uh, the Fed is forecasting another eight rate hikes before the end of this year, or by the end of this year, I should say. Uh, I kind of wish we had gone, gone for this and it had gone through because it's going to cost us a lot more money from an interest rate um, funding point of view, which, which I think is a shame. Listen, we have to deal with the reality that we have now, obviously, so, uh, but I think it's worth mentioning that. It's a very important point. Um, you know, the um, HVAC, I, I, it's, I, I'm encouraged to hear that being discussed in this call today. Um, and I think that, you know, it's probably already being done. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Buccarelli had already mentioned this, but, uh, you know, ranking those, need, th those uh, units in order of need and already previously alluded to in this call, I think is also um, a necessary uh, step in proceeding forward. Um, and, and just to kind of piggyback on that whole student survey idea too, it'd be great to know what we're excited about, like what the, what the faculty, what the board, what the administration, uh, aside from the infrastructure, it'd be, it'd be good to know what, what we're excited about as a community. Because, you know, I did serve on, on the board a couple of years back, and the way I thought about the referendum was that we have to establish a need, we have to take care of certain things, but we'd also like to have a little bit of a wow factor, a little bit of a vision. And I think that the administration did provide a vision, which you know perhaps not everybody either bought into or perhaps people were unaware of, uh, but it's all out there on the website and I'd encourage people to check that out. Um, you know, I've also heard other ideas, you know, the, the PTO had mentioned uh, the kitchen. Um, I know that during the referendum discussion in the end of last year, uh, there was talk about spreading the cost out over a wider period of time uh, to make it more affordable. Um, you know, I think that that's also tied to the ranking of, of an ordering of the, uh, the, the needs on HVAC and RTUs and you know, chillers and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I think that there's, there's a lot here um, and, and I'd be, you know, happy to, to go through my own personal list of uh, pros and cons of that, that letter that came out in February, uh, in uh, December. I'm not gonna waste everyone's time doing it here, but uh, I'm happy to have a discussion or send an email about that because, you know, like I said, I, I didn't agree with most of it. Uh, but there's a couple points on here that we probably do. If, if our ambition is to get the referendum through, 
uh, and to make some of these uh, changes to, to enhance the educational experience of our students and, um, and the work, the good work of the administration, the faculty, and to improve our community, then you know, I think we do need to take a look at that because I thought that the referendum was gonna pass. I really thought it was. And then in the, fat, the last two weeks before, uh, the tide seemed to have turned somehow. But I think that, you know, overall, if people take a look at, the, um, at what was proposed, I think that the need, needs, plural, have been established. And now we just need to find a way to prioritize things quickly to both take care of what's necessary and in infrastructure, et cetera, as well as being proud of what the vision uh, is going to look like. And so I guess I'll just end my comments there. But thank you for hosting this. And, um, you know, I, I, I really want the board and I want the community to benefit from this. And thank you very much. Thank you, Dennis. That's very helpful. Uh, Bruce, you've been waiting patiently. Why don't, uh, Rich, can you get him? Can you get Bruce Ruck on? Hi, thank you. Now, just two quick suggestions, if you don't mind. I think tonight's idea was fantastic. Uh, I would suggest doing it quarterly, more frequently. I'm not sure of the exact time frame to do this, to keep the community updated on what is happening on a regular basis, not just right before you guys are ready to take any kind of vote on a budget, number one. Uh, two, what would be really great is, and I understand there is no give and take at school board meetings. I understand it is not a time for discussions that people can make comments, but no discussion. Maybe there could be an open meeting for a half hour before or after each school board meeting where people can have a discussion with either the committee that is being formed to do this referendum or whomever before or after a school board meeting. I think that would be great. Uh, and maybe it could be uh, live you know, with questions and in a hybrid method since it won't be the actual school board meeting. It would be off that time frame because I think the community gets frustrated if we're trying to make comments or ask questions and all you get is, okay, next person. There's no feedback, there's no give and take. And I think for the referendum, you're gonna need feedback. You're gonna need give and take at minimum to show that you're really hearing what's being said, not just saying thank you for the comment, but really discussion about it. So that would be either before the meeting, after the meeting, during the meeting, if you want to do it. But I understand that during the meetings, it's really not meant for that. The other comment I would be careful about is using the term, it needs to be replaced because it's old. Uh, we had to chuckle a bunch of people when somebody said uh, during the initial referendum, the bathrooms need to replace because they're 30 years old. And one of my neighbors turned around and said, mine's 45 years old and I'm still not replacing it. It works. Uh, if it needs to be replaced because of privacy issues, 100% replace it. If it needs to be replaced because of ADA issues, 100% replace it. If there's no pressure, it's just leaking. If it's broken, replace it. Ask for the money. But don't just say, let's replace it because it's old. Many of us live in houses that are old and some people would love to buy some of the fixtures you're gonna get rid of from the old bathrooms because they just have so much value in older homes. But you know, in all seriousness, replace what needs to be replaced, but don't use the term just because it's old. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. All right. Remember again, too, that the uh, referendum email is referendum at watchungschools.us, and that we are interested in having um, members of the community express an interest in serving on the ad hoc committee, and an email can be sent to that email address. Um, and again, please emphasize any skills or knowledge that you believe would contribute to the committee. Do we have other comments or suggestions or questions. Anything from the panelists? 
That includes you, Mr. Pepe, too. I'd just like to thank everybody for their time, um, for attending this meeting. I think there are some good suggestions here. Um, you know, with Mr. Ruck not knowing about this meeting, I think we got some work to do there. And uh, yeah, that's what this is all about, is trying to engage uh, the community uh, in next steps for this referendum. So thank you all for participating. Anyone else? Thanks, Rich. Okay, again, this meeting's been recorded. It uh, will be posting it on the website. So if you know someone who wasn't able to make it and would like to see it, they can visit the uh, referendum, referendum website on the district webpage. Uh, and again, the email address is referendum at watchingschools.us. Unless there's anyone else who would like to share some feedback or impressions or ask any questions, maybe we will uh, include this meeting. All right, thank you, everybody. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pepper.